everyone, NFI Hammer here with another miniature painting. This time I am doing Master Cretch from the Skinnikin Warband from Underworlds. This was the last Warband released in Warhammer Underworld uh, version 1, and I'm super excited to get this finished so I can give it a go in the new Warhammer uh, Underworlds edition. This was heaps of fun to paint as a beginner. I thought it was really easy, so let's get started. So as I mentioned, this was uh, one of the two war bands released in Wintermoor, which was the last sort of box set from Underworlds version 1. If you haven't been keeping up to date, they've kind of released a whole new edition with simplified rules and um, more streamlined sort of play, which I'm really excited about getting into, but I have to force myself to finish painting all the miniatures um, from these war bands before I can really get started. Um, sorry that this video has uh, taken so long to come out. I have just been caught up in real life world stuff and I haven't really had much time to do as much painting as I would like. Hopefully, now that we're moving into the holiday season, um, I will be able to resume with a bit more painting. The assembly of this model was very straightforward. I think this is probably, you know, a Games Workshop at their finest with their miniatures, is with these Underworld models. They just clip into place really easily. They don't have too many mold lines to remove, and, you know, they, they all have interesting and unique poses. I'm still experimenting with sort of zenithal sprays and contrast paint. So for this one, I'm using a flat gray primer. Um, this is the Rust-Oleum brand you can get from any local hardware store. If you're an Aussie, you can easily just get it at a Bunnings and get yourself a snag while you're at it. And I'm trying this out because when I use the white primer on the other model, which you can watch the video here, it was just a very um, bright green, like almost like a Hulk green. And I wanted to see if I could uh, darken it a little bit. But the gray that came out um, was a little bit dark gray. So what I'm doing here is I've stolen a makeup brush from my wife. I've dipped it in some water. I tried to get some of the moisture off. And then I've just kind of put it in some Corax white. But I think any sort of white paint would work and I'm just trying to get a good consistency. And then I'm just going to dry brush the model with this white kind of highlight. And you can see there it's kind of pulled up all the details really nicely. And then I'm going to do it as well to the model. And hopefully this will give the contrast paint um, a little bit extra depth, a little bit of extra help. Uh, by making the highlights a little bit lighter and the crevices still maintain the dark color, which is what the contrast paint uh, is meant to do. But I think you need to kind of give it a little bit of a help. So I'm mixing two colors here, Achillean green and orc flesh. I'm using one of these syringes that we had to give um, our cat some medication and is trying to mix uh, these two colors together just to create something kind of a little bit different and unique. And then once that is mixed, and then I'm just going over all the skin tone with this color using one of my old crappy brushes. And I'm trying not to get it into, you know, um, the little fur and clothes. Uh, just so that I don't have to paint over it again. But other than that, I'm just kind of applying a fairly thick um, coating. It is a little bit darker than I had originally hoped for on the model. I was kind of hoping for a little bit lighter green, um, but it definitely isn't as green as um, the flying Kantsky character before. And then, yeah, because uh, the bases are bespoke to the model, there's actually like a foot on the base as well, so don't forget about that. 
because he is a little bit dark, I've gotten some warpstone glow and I've done the whole dry brushing thing. And I'm just trying to just pick up some highlights on the model with the warpstone glow, just to kind of bring out a little bit extra um, detail on it. It's not very uh, noticeable. I could have gone something like a moot green that's brighter, um, but I thought this was kind of a subtle effect. And then for the fur, keeping it consistent um, with the other skin and kin models, I'm using Venetian purple to try and just bring out um, some contrast between the green and the purple as they're kind of like opposite colors on the color wheel. And I'm just trying to very carefully not get any on the skin here and um, just going over all the fur and trying to get into the crevices a little bit as well. And then I'm using Bugman's Glow here as sort of a color for the like belt and stuff because you know I'm sure they're using the skin of their victims hence the name Skinnikin to um, wear into clothes. I don't know why they want to wear clothes if you're you know cannibal tribe I think nudity is probably the least part of your worries to worry about but anyway um, so I'm really excited about this warband to give them a go on the battlefield but the next color is rhinox hide which I use as like a wood color so I'm just painting the handle here the warband, you know, um, in the version 2 of Underworld has some interesting abilities that you can see on the screen here. So they've tried to capture the flavor of it in the first edition with the haunch tokens and they've kind of um, kept it very similar. Here I'm using the Rhinox hide to also represent dirt color as well on the base. And then I'm using this Rune Lord Brass, which I use on my Necrons all the time, if you watch those videos, um, to paint the axe, I guess you'd call it. I picked this color rather than the silver color because, um, you know, copper is a much easier metal to work with. I don't think these guys would have sophisticated smiths um, to forge high quality weapons. I feel like they've just gotten some metal they've probably stolen from somewhere and just kind of fashioned it into a blade. And then I'm using Corax White next here for the teeth um, and the eyes. Just trying to bring out a bit of detail onto the model. So the Kretsch um, unit in Warhammer Underworlds 2 has some interesting abilities like if he scores a critical hit he gets like a haunch token um, and then I'm also doing the eyes I'm just very delicately trying to not get the paint everywhere and just color the eyes in and when the Kretsch unit gets inspired as well, he kind of gets worse a little bit, like his armor gets worse and his attack gets a little bit worse. Um, so it's a little bit interesting, but we'll see how it plays out. And so then I'm using Evil Sun Scarlet um, paint here to just give them a bit of a red eye. If you like uh, this channel and watching a beginner develop their skills in the hobby, please consider leaving a like um, or comment or a subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I'm also just trying to put it on the tongue as well, just to give it a bit more, um, you know, of a depth. The teeth kind of looked very American, like white, <laughs> like a bit over the top. I don't think a cannibal would really have that shiny white teeth. So I've just got some Nuln oil just to try and darken that out a little bit. Um, just so that it's not so bright. It's not really working as well as I'd hoped, but um, it does kind of take a little bit extra of the shine off. So I realized the fur was kind of one dimensional just with the Phoenix um, paints. So I've gone over with some Jean Steeler 
purple just as a layer paint over the top just trying to pick up some of the edges i'm not trying to obviously get into the crevices or anything um but some of the raised edges i'm just trying to um add some brightness to it and uh, he's also got a bit of a comb over going on his head as well so tried to paint that and then just going one step further with the chala lilac um which is like a super bright purple i'm just really trying to pick up just a couple of little edges um just to give it that extra pop so yeah it's not really been that many colors and the model's pretty much in the final stages of getting ready so this dude has been very easy so far to paint then i've got some katie and flesh tone which I, I don't think i've really used this paint very much um so i'm trying to use it to be the skin color of this poor victim that's lying on the ground and i'm just trying to give it a good base coat so it's a bit brighter than the bug man's glow that i used for the belt i'm assuming because like this is maybe you know um a new victim that he's cutting up versus like something that's you know cured and tanned and turned into fabric so i've got the same red color from before the evil sun scarlet and i'm using this as a blood color just to kind of paint in um the inside of the haunch of meat probably like maybe a darker red would have been good but i actually have very limited red colors um available and again sorry my thumbs covering it all up but um you know don't forget the stuff on the base as well but yeah i really like games workshop doing these detailed um bases i think it makes it really fun so I, i've got a pink paint pink horror um and i'm just kind of painting a little bit of pattern or texture inside to be like guts because like when you think about a body it's not just all blood inside you know there's organs and limbs and sinew and stuff so i'm just trying to create a little bit of a random texture just to simulate um you know guts coming from necrons i don't really have much experience with painting um you know bodies and bones and stuff so it's a, quite a new experience for me so i've just got the corax white again um, to paint the bone inside the meat you know i'm kind of thinking this is probably like a thigh or i don't know some you know big bone section um so just trying to do that and not get it everywhere and now it's time to add some shade to it so i've got agrax earth shade here and i'm just kind of going over the skin just to give it a bit of depth and texture because you know i don't think the skin's probably being dragged through some mud um, and then the bone as well looked a bit too white so just a little bit extra but i'm really running low on this and just yeah dirtying up the blade again you know i don't think these guys really care about hygiene and keeping things clean so just kind of dirtying everything up this was a little bit of a risky move because the model already was a lot darker than i'd anticipated so i didn't really want to get any over the skin because it was dark um, already and again trying to fix his veneers and make it a little bit darker and then just something that i prefer but honestly you can do any color but i kind of like doing the base rims in black i find that black kind of um shrinks away so that you actually your eyes focus more onto the base itself um, but i'm really struggling here getting the texture of this paint correct my bottle if you noticed before is kind of a bit busted um so um it's dried out i'm also painting the fingernails of the model black as well um it doesn't really make sense that their nails would be skin colored in my head at least so just trying to make them black 
and then something I've been doing with all my Underworld models is just putting a little bit of this mossy texture um, with some PVA glue and just kind of highlighting some areas and sprinkling some on. It's probably silly to do this because the model is already so green with the Skinnikin um, green flesh, but you know, for consistency and I just really wanting to learn how to use this, um, I've just been putting this mossy texture on, but it does create a bit of green on green texture, which is not ideal. Maybe I could have found some different color moss or something um, instead. But yeah, let me know how you found this video. This is the finished model. Again, like the color of the skin is quite dark, um, but I do like the textures and depth of the model um, by using the contrast paint and the dry brush. Um, super easy to paint though. Like I really recommend this warband for any beginners um, wanting to get started in the hobby. Which makes sense because I think Underworlds is sort of like the good gateway into miniature painting and tabletop gaming. Anyway, hopefully I can finish the other Skinnikin models and the last Brethren of the Bolt models so that I can move on to the new Warhammer Amberguard edition. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.